Get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month. You'll get unlimited access to the news you need to stay engaged and connected to your community. Visit Inforum.com slash subscribe now to get three months of local news for only 99 cents a month. After 96 years, a North Dakota man still holds the record for longest beard in the world. And this fall, Hans Langseth's Minnesota relatives will travel to the Smithsonian Institution to see it in person. Hi, this is Tracy Briggs, and welcome to Back Then. Well, no doubt it's an odd thing to do after a funeral. Instead of having open faced sandwiches and coffee in the church basement, Hans Langseth's children took out a pair of scissors and cut off their dead father's beard before his casket, with him in it, was lowered into the ground. As good Norwegians, though, the coffee and sandwiches no doubt came later. Anyway, cutting the beard and saving it for posterity was actually Hans Langseth's last wish. After all, he pretty much dedicated his entire life to growing it. Now the time had come to see just how long it had gotten. After 62 years of growth, Langseth's beard was measured at 17.6 feet long, a Guinness World Record for the longest natural beard locks for a male and that record does still stand today. The cut beard was tucked away in an attic for 40 years before Langseth's family donated it to the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. in 1967. The beard was on display for a few years at the Smithsonian's Natural History Museum before it was retired and packed away again. But this fall, some of Langseth's relatives will get to see those locks again. Great-great-grandson Dan Backer of New Ulm, Minnesota, along with his wife Janine, plan a visit to the Smithsonian where they've received special permission to view the beard. Backer, who is descended from Hans's daughter Emma, says he doesn't even remember the first time he learned about his famous ancestor, but Hans has been part of their family lore for a long time. Here's what he told me. When I was a fifth grader, we had a show and tell, and we were supposed to say something interesting about our families. Well, I must have used this story hundreds of times. People are like, no way. And I have to say, no, this is legit. We actually have a big picture of him in our dining room on the wall, because it's a great story and a great conversation piece. So what exactly is the story of Backer's great-great-grandfather, Hans Langseth, the man better known by some as King of Whiskers? Langseth was born in Norway in 1846 before immigrating to the United States when he was 21. He settled in Iowa where he built a life with his young bride, Anna Bernson. The couple had six children before Anne died in 1891. She was only 40 years old. For whatever reason, the family moved north. The 1900 census shows Langseth and at least one son living in Elkton Township in Clay County, Minnesota. That's about 20 miles southeast of Moorhead. By 1910, they had moved to Antelope in Richland County, North Dakota. That's about 20 miles west of Wahpeton, where Langseth farmed. But Hans Langseth was getting known for more than just growing crops. That beard of his was something else. He had been growing it since he was 19 years old and had entered a beard growing contest back in Norway. There's no information on whether he won anything in that contest, but the fact is he never stopped trying. Backer says he doesn't know what motivated his great-great-grandfather to keep growing his beard. He says, I don't remember anyone in the family really ever talking about that. By the turn of the 20th century, the beard was getting to be several feet long. In a story about Langseth in Smithsonian Magazine, physical and forensic anthropologist Dr. David Hunt said because beard hair can only grow about four or five feet before dying off, Langseth matted the dead hair together in a coil, kind of like a dreadlock, to further lengthen and strengthen the beard. Then he'd roll it around a corn cob and carry it in a pouch around his neck or tuck it into his clothing. Now, because this is a podcast, you can't see this, but I do encourage you to look up my story on Formcom 
um, or inform.com because we have some rare footage of Hans Langseth from the 1920s where you can see him actually playing jump rope with some kids with his with his beard and doing using the beard as a fishing line and you can see how he rolls up his beard in that corn cob so again i would encourage you to go to inform.com and find our story or you can also um, find it just on youtube it is worth the view well hans langseth eventually toured with a sideshow exhibition where he went by the name of king of whiskers the show traveled throughout the united states and backer says it appears the show even visited Europe. According to family members, Langseth ended up quitting the sideshow job because he didn't like people pulling on his beard, insisting it was fake. But they say he did like it when the fat lady washed it. In 1922, Langseth entered another longest beard contest in Sacramento, California. He finished first. The beard at that time measured 17 feet exactly. Langseth died just five years later, and seemingly his beard had grown another six inches to reach the record-breaking mark of 17.6 feet. However, and this is interesting, Backer and the rest of the family say Hans Langseth's beard was actually even longer, closer to about 18 and a half feet long, because the son who cut the beard left Hans with about a 12-inch beard as he lay in the casket. Backer says he doesn't quite know why they did that, but perhaps the family didn't want him buried clean-shaven, as obviously they only knew him with the beard. Backer says maybe it was a sign of respect to leave him with a beard of some kind. While Langseth spent his final years in Barney, North Dakota, he is buried alongside his wife in Kensot, Iowa. The Smithsonian Institution, one of America's greatest museums, might be the perfect resting place for Langseth's beard, after all, it's a physical manifestation of history itself, an actual timeline of one pioneer's life. The dark hair at the tip reflects his days as a young farmer. Smithsonian anthropologists actually found little kernels of wheat in some of those early dreadlocks. Then Hans's beard lightens as it reaches his face, the stark white hair of an old Norwegian-American farmer who endured the challenges of life working the prairie through drought, infestation, and flooding. Backer says he's looking forward to visiting the Smithsonian this fall, where officials have been nice enough to get them special access to see the famous locks up close. He says knowing about the beard and even seeing it in person is one more step and keeping this family story alive. He said, For Christmas a couple of years ago, I gave all three of my kids a photograph of Hans in a frame. I put who he is on the back because I want this to live on. We don't tell stories anymore. They get forgotten. This is a great, fun piece for my kids to talk about their great, great, great grandfather. We need to remember our history. I totally agree. And thank you so much for joining me this week on Back Then. I hope you catch us next time. If you're loving this podcast, be sure to check out our full lineup. From news and local politics to sports and true crime, find your next great listen right now at inforum.com slash podcasts. That's inforum.com slash podcasts.